Greetings, friend. Do you know how we can use the colored cells to solve for a 7 in that block? In this tutorial, I'll show you how to solve this plus two other examples using hidden triples. My second example is so rare that I had to create a brand new puzzle just to show it. Puzzle links are in the description below. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, our first example is from Enthralling Sudoku number 20 by Ashish Kumar. What you'll notice is we're trying to figure out where we can put a 7 in this block. Well, you, we saw for 7 up here in column 2, and you have the 7 in column 1, and you have this 7 here in row 4. So there could be two possibilities for this 7. But what we want to look at is what numbers feed into this block. You might notice you have a 9 right here that can't be in any of these cells. You have a 6 right here that cannot be in any of these three cells either, and this 4. And so what you have is a 4, 6, and 9 that cannot be in these three cells. They're limited to these three cells right here. Whenever you have the same three digits or a subset of them as canets in exactly three cells within the same row, column, or block, this is called a hidden triple. And what it means is that no other canets can be in these cells. So you could have put a 4, 6, and a 9 right there and you can eliminate the nine because we have a nine here in column two but that means this is the only place you can put a four six or nine they cannot go in these three cells and once you do that that removes the possibility to put a seven in any of these cells and so you can solve this cell for a seven this is the most common type of hidden triple you'll see and what you notice is it's just like cross hatching except you're using three canets instead of just one Let's move on to our next example. For this next example, I want to show you a hidden triple that it's not very common to find. However, it will come up time and again. If you're solving a New York Times hard Sudoku, you might find a hidden triple like this. Focus on row seven. I've already filled out all the possible candidates as we're working through this. And I did create this puzzle through Hadoku so I could find hidden triples for you to study. You want to look here, and there's a hidden triple in this row. Now, what you might look at is you could go right here and look at these five cells and go, those five cells contain the digits 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. Those are the only five digits that be in those five cells. And we can highlight that in yellow. Now, we don't normally look for a naked quintuple, but that's basically what this is. Instead, what might be normal to find or look at is you're looking at a smaller subset of less than five cells. Because if we look in this cell, this cell, and this cell, what you'll notice is if you're looking for where the ones can be, they're restricted to one of these purple cells in row seven. If you look for where a three can be, it's also restricted to two of these cells in row seven, two of the purple cells. And then if you look into where a seven can be, it's restricted to these two cells, which are in the purple in row seven. So the one, three, and the seven form a hidden triple. And so you can get rid of any other candidate that's not a one, three, or seven. So this five, six, and nine, you can remove there. And then this four, five and eight can be removed from right there the reason being if you try to put one of those cans in here you know for example you put a four in there yeah then you can eliminate all of these fours you end up with a five eight naked pair which you'd get rid of the five and eight from those cells and look all you have left to put in here would be a six in two cells you break the puzzle so we know we can't put anything other than a one three or seven in those pink cells and what this does for us is it allows us to make a solve whether you found that naked quintuple which is not common or this hidden triple now there's only one place in row seven where you can put a nine and it's this cell right here you notice there's no other place a nine could be after you found that hidden triple and really the only difference between finding the complement the naked quintuple or the hidden triple is order 
and the marking. And so if you mark the cells first and found the naked quintuple, you could stop marking these purple cells. If you find the hidden triple, then you can remove the marks from the other cells. Let's move on to our next example. For our last example, this is going to be the most powerful use of a hidden triple. And we actually have two that we work on here from round six of the Sudoku Grand Prix. If you want to look right here, you see you have a four, five, and six in block seven. You have a one, two, and three in column two looking at these three cells in block seven. And so where could you put a one, two, or three in this block? They can't go here. They fit in exactly these three cells. And so what you end up having is a one, two, three hidden triple, right? Because you thought you might be able to put other candidates in here, like a nine could go in there. Well, it can't because the one, two, and three have to fit in those three cells. And so once you have those, the hidden triple right there, whatever's left ends up being a naked triple right because you eliminated a one two and three from these cells and since we found the hidden triple first you can put in the naked triple now and go this has to be a seven eight or a nine and this is very common you find a hidden pair then you'll also be able to find naked pairs that go in the same block or the same row same thing here with the hidden triple and what this hidden triple does is this is called a locked triple it's locked cans because it's not only satisfies the one two and three in block seven but also they're in the same column so whenever candidates take up two different houses that's called locked candidates so in this case it's a locked triple because it's in column three as well and what this means is a one two and three cannot be anywhere else along column three how this helps us out in this puzzle is you'll notice the one two and three can't be in these two cells and so the one, two, three here, you got this one, two cutting across. There's only two places for a one and a two now in block four. And so this is now a hidden pair that you're able to create because of this hidden triple right here. Now let's move up to the other side and let's spot the other hidden triple. You have a one, two, and three right here. You have a four, five, and six right here. Can you see where we can put the hidden triple in block three? That's right. The four, five, and six can only fit in these three cells. And so we'll mark that and we'll remove the marks down here. I don't want to confuse you. And since we already have a five in row two, that can't be a five anymore. But now this hidden triple creates a naked triple because there's only three cells remaining. They have to be a seven, eight, and nine. We can remove the eight from right there. We can remove the nine from right there. And this is going to be very powerful for us. It actually does two different things. One, it uses as a pointing triple, another set of lock candidates, that the four can't be anywhere else along column seven except in these three cells. And you have this four right here, and you have these two fours. The only place to put a four now in block nine is right here. So we use this locked hidden triple as a pointing triple to allow us to solve for this four. The other thing this does is it allows us to put three candidates of a naked triple in column eight. And so now there's only two possibilities left in column eight, a one and a two. And since we have a two right here, we can actually solve both of those cells. We know this has to be your one and that has to be your two. Watch this video if you wanna solve hidden triples better. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me A Coffee page I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.